Hi everyone. Uh, this is the third video about uh, the numerical solution of ordinary differential equations. And this, as promised, we want to look a little bit more into the specifics of how we can, uh, in a more uh, systematic approach, find approximation schemes or numerical integration schemes, is what they're called, that give us better accuracy and we do not have to pay the very high price of reducing the time step uh, in a massive extent. Okay, so what have we seen until now? We have this, this ordinary differential equation, this is always our thing, x dot equals f of x, and we want to find a numerical solution to this. And what we have seen is, okay, we have the explicit Euler scheme, for instance, where we have a very simple update rule to give an initial step to predict the next state, x at t plus delta t. We have seen the implicit version of this, where we need to solve a linear or nonlinear system of equations to get the new update, which has the benefit that they tend to be much more stable, um, but also we have to solve the system, which can be expensive. And then we talked a very, in, in a very you know, unspecific terms about this improved Euler, where we said, okay, let's take half the step and then use, use the, uh, the, the solution that we found at half the step and then do the full step using this midpoint information. And we saw that this was actually a lot better. And so the question now is, um, this was rather ad hoc, I, might, I would say, um, can we apply, approach this in a bit more, more, more systematic way? And by this find, let's say, a family of schemes, and we will find these in the end, that allow us to choose approximation qualities um, as we wish. Okay, so the question that we are going to address in this video is, is there a systematic approach to this discretization? All right, so where we start is, this is always the problem, you know, I've mentioned it a couple of times already, um, x dot is equal to f of x at time t. And the question is now, how do we get this more systematic viewpoint, <coughs> excuse me, to get a rule for, for updates? And so there's a, a, a thing that we can exploit now, or will exploit. We have said the problem is that we do not necessarily know the analytic solution, or we cannot compute it in closed form. However, we can still try to, to solve for it, okay? And then we will see where the approximation comes into play. So. How do we get this exact solution, at least theoretically? We integrate, okay? Integral over x dot gives me x, so this might be the solution. And then let's see how we can proceed from there. Okay, so let's compute the integral and then see what this gives us and then see how we can use this in a computer to find a numerical scheme, all right? So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take the integral, let me emphasize this here on both sides, and what this will give me is I get, well, let's write it down here, integral from t0 to our current time because we're interested in the solution x at time t, x dot of, and now I need to change the name here, of the time, right? This is the integral, and I'm doing the same step on the right-hand side, so this obviously does not change my solution, which is f of x of tau g tau. Okay, so here we have it. And this is something we I'm obviously allowed to do, right? If these are integrable functions, what I will get is, I get here x uh, the, 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 the integral of x dot gives me x, and then I just need to insert the times. So this gives me x of t minus x of t zero. And here I run into the same problem, right? We have introduced this in detail. I do not necessarily know the analytical solution, which remains the same problem here. So it is just the same thing as before, right? So I need to think about a way to, to get this. But what you see now is I actually have my solution here. So what I can do is I can simply put 
the x of t0, so my initial condition, to the right-hand side, what I get in this case is x of t is equal to my initial condition x0, this is exactly this, plus now this integral. E tau. Okay, and there you have it. I have a solution. I cannot necessarily compute it analytically, but still I have one, okay? So this is the initial condition. And now the question of deriving a numerical scheme is again the question of discretization. Before we asked ourselves, can we use finite differences for this one? Now we are asking ourselves, how do we discretize this term here? Okay, can we find a numerical rule to find a solution for this in a computer? And so the discretization of this leads us to the family of quadrature rules. And these date back to Gauss, roughly 200 years, who was the first to study how to, given a finite number of function values, uh, approximate these integrals. And this is what you can study now, and if we take the family of these quadrature rules, we can actually, you know, using different rules, and we are going to study this now in, in this simple plot here, you can get approximations of different accuracies. So let's consider some of these quadrature rules. As I said, these date back to Gauss, as far as I know. So what can you do? Okay, the question is how can you approximate this integral? Huh? The, the question is integrate over f of x of tau d tau. This means basically if this is my x, f of x of tau, get the area under this graph. <coughs> and so what can you do? The first thing is let's take the function value at the left side of the interval. Now this goes from t0 to t1, here it was for arbitrary t, but if I insert t1 here, you see that this is precisely the situation. And what we will do in practice is we use this time after time to get this numerical scheme. So now let's start, let's consider the left value. This is this one here, right, and you see what we get now is we get this area, okay? So if we just take this value, then what we get is x um, so the integral is approximately the width times the function value right and so what we get is x of t1 is approximately now x of t0 plus delta t times f of x of t0, okay? So the integral is replaced by the width, delta t, times the left-hand side. And we have seen this before, remember? This is precisely the explicit Euler scheme. So uh, this, this can be, you know, incorporated in this quadrature family by considering the left value. But now you see, well, we're not limited to the left value, we can also take the right value. Okay, so now let's switch to another color. If I do this, then this is precisely this point, and the integral is approximated by this area. Okay, so, and surprise, surprise, this will be the implicit Euler, right? X of T1 is given by, or in this, it's an approximation, obviously, but if we take this rule, then what we get is X of T1 zero, oh, let's be consistent here, this is, if we take this rule, this is equality, how we use it, um, plus delta t times f of x of t1, okay? So right hand side, the integral becomes this area. And so you see, implicit and explicit Euler are just two ways of, you know, solving this integral. What we have seen also, is, uh, if you recall, this improved Euler, we said let's find an approximate value for this midpoint here. 
right? We use this um, for taking the explicit order set for half the width. And then what you would do is you would take this value and approximate the integral by the rectangle, which is covered from top by this, this horizontal line. So you see this gives me a rather nice approximation because this part is overestimated, but this part is underestimated. And so this was the reason why this was actually much, much better. All right, so what we've seen now is, but I'm not going to write this down, this was the improved Euler. Um, but this was all one point rules. But nobody's telling me that I am limited to these two points, right? So what I can do, I can, as a third rule, take both values. All right, so what I'm going to say is then the integral, I'm not writing the rule like this, because it's, it, it, it's a bit more complicated, but the integral is what I'm now after, this one, right? So integrating from t0 to t1, f of x of tau d tau is then approximated by the left value and the right value, and then I divide by two, right? Before I do so, let's consider this This one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm get, getting this trapezoidal shape. And you see the area is now, you know, the trapezoidal rule means I have this height times the width plus this height times the width divided by two. So if you wish, it's half times this plus half times this. So what we get is delta t over two. And then f of t, uh, x, excuse me, t0 plus f of x of t1, right? So half this plus half this. So this is what we call the so-called trapezoidal rule. All right, so these are three examples. And what I have not told you until now, that this is a whole family which has a name, right? So what these are generally called are so-called Runge-Kutta schemes. Named after two mathematicians who invented these types of schemes. And the idea is always the same. You take different points, right? You're not limited to two. We are also allowed to take points in the middle, you know, using intermediate steps and then use these. So we have these, what we call quadrature points and use these to approximate the integrals. And so these is the family of Runge-Kutta schemes. And so two comments before we close, there are implicit schemes and there are also explicit schemes. And this is what we've seen. Implicit if we take values only at the left that we know and then we progress forward. Implicit if we take values to the right that we have to implicitly compute. This was the case for two and three in these examples. And if we take more of these quadrature points, then what we will get is what's called a higher order. And the term order, I'm not going to define it formally here, but what it refers to is the fact that if I decrease the time step delta t, with which order does the error decrease? Right, and we've seen the left value, so explicit Euler or implicit Euler are first order methods, which means if I reduce the, the time step delta t by a factor of two, the error will also redu uh, be reduced by a factor of two. And so higher order methods means, such as the trapezoidal rule, mean that this is of order two. If I reduce the time step by a factor of two, the error is discuse, discu reduced by a factor of two to the power of two, so by four. So more quadrature points give us higher order um, approximations. And we have seen in this improved Euler example in the previous video that this improved Euler also has a better order. So a higher order gives me much, much higher accuracy by not paying the price of you know, only linearly improving the error by reducing the time step. 
And with this, we close the part on numerical solutions of ODEs, and we will continue with, with partial differential equations and other exciting topics. Thank you.